Hello everyone, I am Nutrix and today I'm answering a subscriber's question about problem syncing two of his devices. And honestly, I think it's one of the biggest problem I see online, people asking about how to sync two devices. They, they, when they get it to work, they're not really sure why and how, and when they have devices that can't work and they try to figure out how to do it and they just let it go, they just stop trying. I'm gonna explain or try to explain as much as I can these devices, the way he's trying to make it work. Um, and I don't have the devices. So I'm gonna do what everybody should be doing when you try to even see if the devices that you're trying to play together can play together. And this could be done by you before you buy the gear by just reading about it. So let's actually Go back to the question. The question is simple. Uh, he has a Roland Gaia and a Roland TB3, which is a base sequencer, the green and black version, which I owned years in the past. So he's trying to get them to work together. He's trying to get them to sync together so they play at the same speed. But what he's trying, what he's able to do, and he says, well, the problem I have is I actually have the Gaia as the master of the TB3. And it's weird because you control the TB3 with the Gaia cutoff, ADSR, and the other knobs on it. So he's actually controlling it. Um, I mean, controlling the sound of it, but he's not syncing them together. And he's been trying to figure it out and he just, he stopped. So this, this video is to answer him and try to also help others people. Because just by reading the question right away, I understand that the person um, doesn't get the full extent of what's happening right now because it's it's not easy when you don't know the basics of what's behind it. Uh, it's sure that it's not easy. So to be able to understand this, you need to go back to the MIDI implementation. What does MIDI actually can do? And just to be clear, MIDI is defined with d different types of MIDI messages. And there's actually three types of families of MIDI messages, if you want. You have the MIDI messages are system exclusive, and these messages are exclusive to one device. So they're exclusive to the Gaia, for example, or the TB3, for example. So these are exclusive to that device or maybe other model of the same type. Let's say you have the JV2080, Maybe some of the system exclusive messages can also talk to the JV1080, you know, because they're in the same family, they could have some of it being the same messages. System exclusive is one of the messages. It's exclusive to a device. Second one is system messages. So they talk about the whole device. They're system wide. And then the most important one, or the one that we use the most of the time, is called the, the channel messages. So this is not a system-wide message. These are channel. So that's why we say in MIDI, we have 16 channels, and each of the channels can actually transport a whole performance of an instrument. So let's say on channel one, I could have a piano performance. Channel two, I could have a drum machine. Channel three, I could have a, a, a bass. Channel four, I could have a pad, whatever it is, you have 16 different channel to transport a performance, a musical performance. So most of the messages you'll get in these messages, in these uh, channel messages, you're gonna get note on, note off, a volume, velocity, pitch band, sustain, and all the knobs on your synthesizer, all these, these knobs that you have can send most of the synthesizers. Again, it depends on the synthesizers because it's not because the messages exist that the device has been made to support them. That's the really important part is that it's not because there's like 120 different messages that the company said, well, we want to support all of them. They might not. So you have to look into the media implementation, implementation chart. And if you don't know how to read it, there's a link here to a video where I actually explain and I go through all of it. So go through that if you want to go deeper into that. But it means that you've got these three types of messages. So just listen to me for a minute and we're going to explain that a little bit more. System messages are system wide and channel messages are 16 different channels for 16 different performance. Now, when you're doing synchronization, 
you're not in channel messages because you want the 16 channel to be performance. So the sync, like tempo information, that's what sync is mostly about, tempo, speed of the song. This is system-wide because you want the entire device to know the speed of the song. And there's only one song that you're playing. So the whole device needs to follow one tempo. So any type of sync, synchronization information is a system-wide information. So these are system messages, not channel messages. So even in the question, when our friend here asks for, well, I find it weird that I move the knobs on my synthesizer, like I would be moving the knob on my Arturia, you know, Micro Freak, or on my System 8, or whatever it is. When I move the knobs, well, they might, if the device is like that, like the Gaia is like that, it sends MIDI messages, channel MIDI messages. Most of the people, what they would do with it, they would actually record these messages into the sequence in your favorite sequencer, Cubase, Live, whatever it is that you want to use, and you record the movement of these knobs. So when you play back the song from the sequence, it would send back these messages of the performance, not just of the note, but on the values of your envelope, filters, and all that stuff. So that would be sending back these performance of the knobs of your synthesizer which is pretty cool. So what he's doing right now, he's actually moving knobs on the Gaia, and it sends MIDI to the TB3, and it works because they're on the same channel somehow, or they're in Omni mode, I'll come back to that. But if they're on the same channel, it means that if you're changing ADSR, ADSR, well, these ADSR messages have been defined as standard, like there's a standard message for A, for D, for attack, for DK, so sustain and, DK and, and release. And the two devices follow the same standard. So when you move one, it sends a message to the other one. So that's not sync. That's basically MIDI control. You're controlling one uh, device values from the first device. So that's not master and slave. That's not uh, lead and following. That's not it. It's basically just a controller sending the message and the other device is made to listen to it. So it does. Now let's go back to Omni. The concept of Omni means that, let's say you put the second device in Omni mode, the one that receives the message. If it is in Omni mode, basically it doesn't care about the channel. It will answer and react to any channel coming in. So if you don't want that, if you want to say, well, I want to send MIDI to it, but I want to own this only to listen to channel three because it's not the same channel that I have my Gaia on, whatever it is, then you could change the internal value to channel three and not in Omni. By default, I think that TB3 is in Omni mode. And a lot of new synthesizers, when you get them, they're by default on an Omni channel saying, I'm going to answer it to anything coming in. But as soon as you have two or different, two, three, five, whatever it is, devices on the same MIDI uh, cable, then you would probably need to split to many different channels for it to actually work correctly. Now, this does not answer at all <laughs> the sync problem because sync is not a channel message. So for the Gaia, to the TB3 to work together to sync, there's a more important question is like, okay, anytime, any, any moment you're gonna sync two devices together, who's gonna be the master clock? Who's gonna be the most stable device that can have the other follow the same tempo? Because, like in the band, who's gonna be the lead tempo and who's gonna follow that lead? That's, that's the same logic. Well, the problem is that a synthesizer is not always the best option because a synthesizer, if it doesn't have a song mode, might not be a good master clock. It can be synced to MIDI clock to just to be able to have, I don't know, the arpeggiator to be slave to the same tempo or the LFOs to be synced to the tempo or some synthesizers have a song mode. So yes, the song could be slave to another device. Now, when your synthesizer has a song mode, it might be a good master clock also, because now it's a sequencer on top of being a synthesizer. So it depends on the device you're using. In the case of the Gaia compared to the TB3, well, the TB3 could be also a good master in a way, because it's a sequencer 
with a base synthesizer in the same box. So why not? Well, let's actually go in and look at the values that you have in the MIDI implementation chart. So I've downloaded the information about the manual of the TB3 and basically tells us that the MIDI clock source, you need to turn on the machine by pressing scatter and turn on at the same time. And then you're going to say little lights will, will pop up. And if you have the pad number C lit, that's what it's written here, it's going to be in auto mode. And if it's unlit, it's going to be internal. So internal means that the TB3 will actually follow its internal tempo, not listening to anything coming in. And if it's in auto mode, it will actually listen to whatever comes in. And if something comes in from the MIDI, uh, from the MIDI port or the USB port, it will actually sync to that. So it'll be automatically synced to that input. So what it tells us here is that mostly the TB3 is a good slave. It's going to follow, if you put it in auto mode, I think it's by default in auto mode, and that's it. It's going to follow what, whatever comes in. So it's not a good master, it's a good slave in that case. And then if you go see the Gaia, if you go to System Common, you've got Sung Position, Sung Select, Tune Request, and System Real-Time Clock and Command. And then there's an X for all of them. So you go, okay. At the bottom, you've got the information saying yes and no. So basically, it does not slave or master MIDI clock. It does not send it, it does not receive it. So it's just like, it cannot do what you're asking for. That's it. I'm sad to tell you, but this will not be able to do sync you will not be able to have these two devices sharing the same tempo information. And in the case of the synthesizer, the only thing that would have happened is maybe if there's an arpeggiator on the Gaia, which I don't remember if there's one. Like what I have on this one, there's a arpeggiator on this one. So it's a step sequencer on this one. And there's also, I'm able to sync the LFOs to the tempo coming in and out. So there's a logic here, but in the Gaia, it's not there. It's not on the document. So by reading it, it tells you that you will not be able to do that. So by knowing how to read this, it's going to be important for you when you buy stuff to say, well, these are the limits. If you say, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to be able to do that. Well, it might be able to do it on the device itself, but it might not be able to do interacting, the interaction that you want with the rest of your gear might not work. So the only way, well, you can't even do this in this one. So, so it's just, it's sad to explain to you, but this will not work. But at the same time, it's logic because there is no song mode in the Gaia. So there's no reason for it to be master or slave of, of MIDI because there's, there's none of that information inside this thing. So if you want to do that type of interaction, you will need another device to be master or slave you could have something like you know a step sequencer hardware step sequencer to be a master and slave so this would actually this is the uh, key step pro from arturia and this type of, of sequencer actually sends midi to three devices at the same time midi channel so i could have a drum and bass line and a lead and it sends also tempo information as a separate message and so this could be the master of your two device to play the notes and to trigger the sequencer and actually have also notes since to, I don't know, a drum machine that you buy at one point. So keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> it probably is not the answer you wanted to have, sorry. But at the same time, it's the more you know, the better choices you'll be able to make as you go along and buy new gear and old gear. Because, you know, I don't, I don't buy a lot of new stuff. I buy a lot of used stuff because I think that it costs less and you get the same value. <laughs> so know your gear and know how to read these, these you know, media implementation chart. Now, again, if you want to know more about that, there's a link below where I explain all of the media implementation, the implementation chart information. So to have a wider understanding of it. And the good thing today is that for almost anything that is out there, new or old, you can go online and download a PDF 
and you could have you're gonna have the whole story of what this device can do, even if it's like 20 years old. So, and the MIDI, MIDI one still is very, you know, present. Even if there's MIDI two coming out, it's out, but not a lot of devices supports it yet. And MIDI two will be fully compatible to MIDI one. So even if you buy old gear that is 30 years old, it's still gonna work with the new stuff. It might not do everything media-wise, but it's going to work. So, and if you want to know what it does, you need to be able to read that. So that's it. I hope it helps. Uh, and that's it. If, if, if you need more information, again, the type of video I do, I try to demo stuff, I try to explain, um, and, you know, you put your comments below, you put your question below, and I'll try to answer them. And if, I, if I've got the gear, I'm going to demo it, but if I don't, I'm still going to try to explain why, what you tell me, would work or not. So that's it. Stay safe. See you soon. Cheers.